I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out, righteousness. This weekend, many people referred to uh, the uh, holiday weekend uh, as Easter weekend. Uh, there were a number of mass shootings, mainly by Hamites. Now they call themselves black or African-Americans. Um, in several major cities around America, and especially on here on the East Coast. Um, and I'm going to run the clip, but I, I want to state that these shootings are being done by young boys that are younger and younger. Now, some of the shootings in South Carolina were by men in their 20s. Uh, but there is an epidemic uh, in America that the Joseph Project will heal. Now, the Joseph Project... It's what Almighty God's given to me to uh, bring men from prison who, like me, was once out in the street with guns and shooting and sticking up and burglarizing, uh, went to prison, got our lives together, and I've been out now for 44 years, establishing schools, feeding children, preaching the gospel around the world. There are other men in prison right now, just like me, need to be come, they need to come home and get on the streets. But I want you to just look at the, 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 the kinds of shootings that went on, and mainly among teenagers, not even among adults, uh, uh, over the past uh, Easter Resurrection weekend. Mr. Engineer, roll clip number two, I think it is. In Pittsburgh, a mass shooting at a large party held at a short-term rental property. Two 17-year-olds were killed, and police say at least eight others were wounded by the gunfire early Sunday morning. It's heartbreaking. I mean, here we are Easter, and we have multiple families, uh, two that won't see a loved one. Police say as many as 200 people were at the party, most of them underage. How can you even have a holiday uh, when your child uh, was involved in some, something traumatic like this? According to the police chief, multiple shooters firing more than 90 rounds inside and outside of the house. Some partygoers jumped out of windows, leaving some with broken bones and cuts, police say. The search for the suspects is underway, and officials are urging anyone with information to come forward as investigators process as many as eight separate crime scenes. In Columbia, South Carolina, one man was arrested after a mass shooting at a mall on Saturday. We didn't know who, who was shooting, what direction it was coming from. And uh, it was, I mean, it was really terrifying. 22-year-old Jawain Price appeared in court Sunday. According to the Columbia Police Department, Price is charged with unlawful carrying of a pistol. Police said more charges are possible. CNN has not been able to determine if Price has a lawyer. He's been released on house arrest. Police said they believe those involved in the shooting knew one another. The shooting left 14 people injured, at least nine suffered gunshot wounds, and five others hurt while attempting to leave the scene. About 100 miles south of Columbia in Hampton County, South Carolina, police say nine people were shot early Sunday morning at a lounge. CNN affiliate WTOC-TV reported the lounge was hosting an Easter bash when the shots rang out. Some people jumped into nearby ditches to avoid being hit, WTOC reported. The South Carolina Law Enforcement Division is leading the investigation. In Boston, police said two people were shot in the city's Chinatown neighborhood. Both of these males were transported to local area hospitals and both are currently listed in current, uh, critical condition with life-threatening injuries. Three suspects are in custody after the vehicle police said they were fleeing in crashed. Two were injured in the crash, but police said they do not believe those injuries are life-threatening. Boston police say what led up to the shooting is still unclear, but the investigation is ongoing. And Brianna, certainly law enforcement all across the country is scrambling to try and stop this explosion of gun violence that we're seeing all across the country, one common theme that we're seeing in a lot of these shootings when we come back from the weekend is a lot of innocent bystanders, people out partying, people out shopping, just having birthday parties are getting caught in the middle of crossfire between rival gangs or crews, people fighting and choosing to pull out guns to settle their disputes. And that's what law enforcement is seeing all of Now, what we're looking at here is, well, you know, when it comes to school shootings, generally, uh, on a racial, uh, if you will, explanation, it's usually JFIF young men. 
anywhere from 15 to, to 17 years age of age, Japheth and school shootings. These, these, these night shootings, Japheth young boys killed during the daytime or do their mass shooting during the daytime. I'm, I'm, I want to do an analysis about this. You don't have to agree with it, but I think by doing the appropriate analysis, which I have not heard the powers that be uh, look at this. That's why the Joseph Project is so important that they talk to someone like me who can understand and can get an, give an appropriate analysis. But these shootings over this weekend and, and the shootings that have been going on now for the past year are shootings by Hamites. Now, they call themselves African-American, and they're usually somewhere around the ages of 17. Sometimes they're in their 20s as well. A year ago, down in Miami, uh, a, a similar kind of a party was happening with young people in an after-hour spot in Miami. Three young men drove up in a white automobile, got out, and opened fire. Uh, and just just sprayed the place with bullets, then jumped back in the car. I don't think those young men have been found as of yet. Imagine this. You're 17 years old, right? And you are at a party, you know, maybe you're there with your girlfriend or your, your boyfriend, and all of a sudden someone starts shooting. Can you imagine being in a house and over 90 shots are fired into that? Can you imagine that? I mean, people in Vietnam probably didn't see that many shots fired at one time. Imagine 90 shots. How many people were shooting? How large were the guns that they had? I mean, this is absolutely incredible. That's the scene from a year ago. Uh, these, young, these young black people, these, these young Hamites, where a group of the young people are gathering, and they just go shoot up the place. Whether they're angry with one or two people, they shoot everybody because they have no sense of morality and no sense of discretion, they just shoot and kill. I don't think they've ever been caught. Anyway, so imagine this. Imagine 90 shots in a matter of about five minutes, people jumping out of windows, and most of the people there were underage. Now you hear the fire engines outside of our window going, I think, up Lenox Avenue, but that, don't let that bother you. My concern here is this, is that we're, we're looking at a, 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 a crime wave that, that goes back to the 80s, the late 70s and the 80s with the Bloods and the Crips, sparked by the East Coast, West Coast rappers, people who are basically thugs, uh, that like Suge Knight, being using the music industry, and I say this, but not pejoratively, or with hate or malice, but the Jewish music industry, with its billions of dollars, was paying these thugs, like like Shapak Chakur or, or Suge Knight or Heavy D. They were paying these thugs more money than the drug dealers were making. And they were, all they had to do was get up, rap, grab their crotch, cuss out women, cuss out their mamas, and these thugs were getting all this money. And the Jews, who are very sensitive and extraordinarily good business people, saw that there's an intense hatred in black people for black people. And Probably a Jew sitting in his, I don't say this because I hate Jews, I'm a Zionist. A Jew sitting in his office in the record industry said, these people hate each other. I mean, look at the delivery when these, when these black men sing about black people. Look at the hatred they have for the police. Look at this. This is not written as a script of, of, of Macbeth or Shakespeare. This is pure, raw hatred. And the Jews realized, you know, rather than them singing about love like Sam Cooke, you know, about sex and funkiness like Jane Brown, they just, they tapped into the deep hatred. They saw it as a business deal. The Jews tapped into the black man, black youth, their deep hatred where they could kill one another and it don't bother them. 
And then they gave them big money. And never in the history of the world did musicians kill each other at the level and rate they were killing one another in the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. But the, the, uh, under, underlying all of this is that the Jewish bankers and music produ production people recognize that black people hate each other and they'll kill each other. They'll sing about killing each other. They hate each other, but there's money to make. There's money to be made by promoting them. So this, this, this industry, not called rap music, has been, it's nothing but a hate industry fueled by Jewish money. I mean, paying, making people like Jay-Z allegedly a billionaire. So this has tri trickled down. Now the children and the grandchildren of this 70s and 80s group are now just out there killing one another because that's what they were birthed on. That's what they listened to. That's how they were raised. And so you're not going to stop it. And where are they getting the gun from? I share something with you. A politician, even Democratic politicians, right? The gun lobby, right? The NRA, I don't know how big they are, but they got plenty of money. These Glock 9s, Glock 17s, whether they, they sell for two, three, four, five hundred dollars. Some of these AR 15 sell for 15, they sell for big money. So the gun industry is a cash cow. So politicians running to beat somebody else in this district for Congress or for Senator or Governor, he needs money. He needs a lot of it. He needs to buy television time. He needs to pay expenses. He needs money. And wherever he can get it from. The NRA comes to him and says, listen, we got a million dollars for you, for your campaign. If he gets in office, he ain't going to vote against taking guns off the street. I can tell you that right now, brother. And whether it be Democrat, Republican, white, or black, I'm going to tell you, they ain't going to vote on taking guns off the street. They ain't going to vote on universal background check. They ain't going to vote on that because they got a million dollars. Hell, let these young black boys kill each other. They're all animals any damn way. Let them kill each other. Let them kill each other. Let them kill each other. But I got a million dollars. And that's the root of it. It ain't going to stop. You need the Joseph Project is what you need. Now, you don't want to talk about that. Uh, but it, I, God has given me the, the, uh, uh, the word to, to send to, the, to Mayor Pharaoh Eric Adams. There are men in prison just like me. I was there 44 years ago. Stick-up kid, burglar, doing everything I could possibly do. Spent some time in prison, got my life together. And I've been out here building schools, feeding children, educating, and preaching the gospel around the world. Now, the other men in prison, just like me, there are hundreds of them in prison just like me, need to get out on the street. They need to come out them jails, out them prisons, out them warehouses, and get out here on the street and talk to the little brother. Say, little brother, don't do what big brother did. But more than that, this truth about the fact that the gun lobby I don't care if it's a politician, a Democrat, or a Republican. You get that boy a million dollars for his campaign, he ain't going to vote against the NRA. I can tell you that right now. He ain't voting against it. Same way they don't vote against the gasoline industry. So them guns are going to stay on the street. There are going to be more guns on the street. They're going to manufacture bigger guns with bigger clips, and they can kill more people. I mean, it was unheard of during the days of Al Capone or Jack Legg's Diamond you know, it was unheard of of Babyface, Babyface Nelson. It was unheard of that as many as 90 shots would be fired at anything. <laughs> During the days of the FBI, and, yeah, it was unheard of. But not, it's only going to get worse. There's only one answer. It's called the Joseph Project. Now, it is apparent that most these politicians ain't going to go for the Joseph Project because they thrive off the violence. They run their campaigns on, we're going to stop the violence. They don't really plan to stop it. And then...